So all the big traffickers of hash, the importers, they come from my area, the top, top ones, the first one who brought the, who brought the hash in France, right? So our dream when we, when we were young is to become hashish trafficking, you know, and it was our dream, you know. But we started to sell like, you know, uh, uh, 20 uh, an ounce, ounce, uh, half a kilo, you know, 250 grams. I used to travel to the Caribbean, you know, I used to live in the, in the Caribbean also. And I used to go there with hashish, you know, with hash, you know, those plates, plates of hash, you know. So I used to put one or two kilo like this, you know, on me. Take the plane and go to uh, to uh, to the Caribbean and exchange it, exchange the hash. And back in the days, it was you exchange one kilo of very good quality hash for four kilos of coke because it was really cheap back in the day. Even swallow myself, but I could swallow 800, uh, 800 grams maximum, you know. And just thinking about the taste of it because it's plastic and everything that you put in your into your uh, into your body it get rejected. You know, so ah, but you need to drink some uh, some uh, orange juice or some fruit juice to pass it. You know, they send me everywhere to do the checking. You know, to install the uh, the satellite trackers, to check the quality, to check the stamps, to organize everything from A to B. It's not easy money because a lot of people, you know, that they don't know shit about it. They say, yeah, but is this easy money? It's easy money. No, it is not easy money. It's a job. It's a work. There's demands. You know, offers and demands. You know, there is a logistics, there is money involved, big money. And when you lose, you lose big. They tell me, okay, we find 100 kilos of coke in a boat, you know, and on this boat, uh, we stopped the boat, we found your DNA on the a tracker. The trace of my DNA on the cable, you know, fuck this shit. And they say, it's you, help us, help us. I say, I help no one, you know. Uh, uh, they, first of all, we cannot, I'm, I am very, I will, I'm not a snitch. And then they send me back to jail and that's it, you know. And I did, uh, and I start to be a... Uh, to sit in jail, uh, you know, doing my push-ups and my pull-ups, uh, cooking, you know, being on social media, uh, uh, answering, uh, uh, getting into interviews with media, being invited in on podcasts all over the world. <laughs> Welcome back to Not Guilty TV. Today, delighted to have a very special guest, our first French guest. It's a French Algerian. Today, we are joined by drug smuggler, <laughs> or former drug smuggler, X, Danny X. Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> Danny, how are we doing, my brother? Uh, uh, Danny Hell's Kitchen, the one and only. <laughs> 100%. How are you? Uh, hey, I'm very well, and you? What's going on, Chris? So, yeah. good, so thank, thank you, you, you very much for the opportunity. Nah, thank you very much for inviting me, for thinking about me first, you know, so thank you very much, you know, very cool, we talked, it's been a, a little while that we talked with each other, so you invited me in uh, in England first, but you know, uh, at the moment, you know, I don't have the opportunity to come to the UK, but uh, we do it on Zoom, which is good also, and I'm very, very honoured, you know, always, with everyone who invites me on its pla on their platform, so it's always a honour to share my story, you know, uh, to... Uh, to, uh, to 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 send to share a positive message also you know and some fun <laughs> of course of course um, i very much appreciate the opportunity and like i said i've been uh, a my pleasure watching your other podcasts and yeah. uh, with james english and the blue tick show as well i saw both yeah. of them, and they're excellent and I obviously read the article about your advice a few years ago but uh, okay good about how you got the name hell's kitchen but um yeah. So let's go back to the start, Danny. Like, how did it all start for you? Obviously, I know you grew up in Paris, but how yeah. did someone like you get fall into the life of crime? And what sort of age did you fall into the life of crime? Well, uh, well, 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 uh, that's a long story. But, you know, I've grown up in the 80s, you know, in west of Paris. I'm from west of Paris, you know. I've grown up in the 80s. I've grown up in a very, uh, uh, you know, in, a, in the suburb. But it's just close to downtown Paris, you know. So we are Parisians, but west of Paris. And uh, we come all from the same area, you know, it's like the slums, you know, we come from the slums, uh, literally, and our parents came uh, uh, in the 60s and 70s in France as immigrants from uh, uh, Tunisia and uh, from Algeria also, so they came as a migrant, they worked for, uh, to build France, you know, to build France, 
you know, because as, I don't know if you know, uh, us Algerians, we had our independence against the uh, French colonization in 1962. And uh, from that time, you know, a lot of uh, the elders, the parents, the dads, you know, the uncles, they went to, uh, they migrate to France to uh, find a better life, you know, and to build a family. So this is what happened with my dad, God bless his soul. And uh, and uh, voila, so we grew up uh, we grew up in the 80s in west of Paris. Uh, in those areas, they were managed by and the mayors and the political parties were socialists and communists, you know. So it was a bit rough, I would say. And, uh, and I grew up uh, personally in an area with a lot of Moroccans, so it's because you you know that Morocco is the is the number one producer of cannabis in the world. So we we were we were in that spirit already. And I grew up in a in a neighborhood, you know, in a neighborhood where it wasn't harsh. It wasn't this type of soft drugs in some ways. It was like hard drugs, like heroin, you know. So when I was young, I knew already what was heroin. I knew already what was because in my neighborhood it was full of syringes and. Um, burn spoon you know and lemon because they mix it with lemon you know the uh, the the heroin to inject it so we knew what it is and my mom she also says hey, don't don't pick up the syringe on the floor and we used to see the junkies you know getting the the fix so this is how i grown up and when i was young also to tell you how i got there you know we used to scratch the wall you know the brown wall because they used to sell the brown you know that brown hog heroin yeah. the brown one make the tickets and sell it to the to the drug addicts and when they find out it was like uh, like crap ah, they was they were running behind us with knives to kill us <laughs> nice. so we did that also when, when we were young so i started like this i have to say <laughs> and then uh, sorry gone and we- and were you smoking weed as a kid and drinking, and then did you sort of fall into no, it? Like no, this? no, 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 no smoking weed, nothing like this, you know, because you know when I was a kid, you know, the the parents, you know, for uh, for for our parents, you know, for our families, you know, smoking already cigarettes, you know, it wasn't really uh, good, even though the dads and the uncles were smoking cigarettes, but for the kids, it was like forbidden, man. We we used to get a bit of. So, yes, I did smoke, but I would say uh, from the age of 14, 15, you know, I started to smoke a bit of uh, cigarettes first and then weed after. But uh, it started uh, quite late, not at the age of 12 or the age of 11, I would say. So from there. But uh, we were doing everything to hustle, you know, in the streets to make a little bit of money because, well, I don't want to make people cry in the house, but we were a poor family, you know, as a migrant, the dad working very hard. No, not even reading and speaking, uh, not even speaking very well French, not even reading it or writing it, you know. Uh, the mom, the mom at home, you know, looking after many kids, you understand, poor salary, so it wasn't easy. But for me, I say it often, you know, for me, I have only good souvenir because we were fitted by love, the love of, of, of our parents, the love of our moms, you know. So a lot of people like me had the same life, you know. Uh, a lot of people, yeah, from my background had this type of life. So for us, it was okay because we were playing all day, you know, the, having fun as kids, you know, we were innocent in some ways. But uh, but yes, it was tough. It was tough and rough, you know, so, but it was okay. It was okay. And we had to survive. And I wanted to wear some nice clothes because I had friends that they had like the Adidas clothes, the Levi's uh, uh, jeans, the, the nice jacket. So I had to hustle, sell weed in the street. You know, scratch some uh, some plaster from the wall, <laughs> you know, and sell it to the to, to the junkies to make a little bit of money, make a, you know, buy some clothes, you know, go out with the friends, the girls, you know, so have some fun and travel also because I love traveling. And uh, I have like I always say this story, you know, and I used to go when I have money, I used to go to this uh, down central Paris so it's area called Châtelet, where there is all those uh, uh, clothing stores, you know, like uh, the stores with uh, that sells clothes and uh, and uh, trainers and stuff like that. And I come back uh, and I come back with uh, Nike, with jeans, with jackets and, you know, and I arrive at home. I'm 13, 14, 15 years old, you know, and my mom, she sees that. And she told me, what did you get the what did you get the money from? You know, you steal it from somewhere. <laughs> and I said, no, mom, I found it in the street. <laughs> it always makes me laugh. It's true. I found it in the street. And my mom, she turns mad, you know, because they are our parents, you know, our, my parents and our parents also, they are very honest people, very honest. You know, they were scared of everything, like uh, that people that the, not the white, you know, the French, you know, people. 
you know, tell them, oh, you are, you are wrong, you are bad people, you are the migrants. You know, we were, they were a bit worried about this racism, kind of, because we, we faced these discriminations in some ways, you know. So, uh, so she was scared that I've done so bad stuff, and she used to cut it with the scissors, my jeans, my trainers, and I was so pissed off. I say, ah, oh, yeah, you do that, and I go back again and then buy again the stuff. Still, uh, she didn't have any energy, and she let me do whatever I want. Of course. <laughs> That's uh, nice you know, bro. Of course. Yeah. So, didn't you go to jail um, early on for a couple of short sentences for fraud? Yes, what, yes. What were the frauds, and how long did you go away for? And was this not enough yeah. to put you off the life so, of crime? But so how can I say? Uh, you know, when you touch a little bit of money, and this is the only way uh, you can make money. Because uh, honestly, you know, I'm a very humble guy. And uh, I worked when I can work. I worked uh, at the age of 12, you know, in the markets with my friend Hossein, you know, selling fruits and vegetables, you know, in those stands, you know, the market stands. I worked very, in a very young age, 11, 12. I was already making money, you know. So, um, so uh, yes, I started with fruits. I started, you know, the first time I got banged up. Uh, uh, it was in the uh, in the 90s, you know, in the late 90s. It was the beginning of uh, the uh, the mobile phones. You know, everybody used to get mobile phones. You know, really, really beginning of it. You know, in France, and I find a way to uh, to clone SIM cards, to make SIM cards. And I used to say, and I used to make SIM cards. They stay one year, six months, you know. And you can call uh, uh, internationally. And you remember back in the days, you know, back in the days in the nineties, was very expensive the calls, right? So I used to sell them. I don't know in franc. It was the franc uh, currency back in the days. 1,000 franc or something like this, you know, I don't remember, 1,000 franc, 15, 1,500 franc, you know, and I used to start like this, till they find out uh, the, 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 the scheme I was doing, and then they banged me up, I got uh, 15 months uh, prison, you know, I've done uh, six months, something like this, before getting out on, uh, I don't know how to say it, um, you know, the early release in yeah, on license, you know, I was young, man, I was young, this is my first time, but it didn't stop me, you know, and and you know what? It's crazy, you know, because uh, you know, every time they come, uh, the cops when they come and bang in my door, you know, they come and bang in my door. My mom, she always, uh, she always said to my sister, yeah, but she's not gonna stay long. <laughs> she's not gonna stay long. <laughs> but that time, I stayed almost seven years. The last time, and she was saying that to my sister. So no, he's not gonna stay long as usual. <laughs> Dude. Huh? So yeah, you but. Yeah. yeah sorry. Sorry. So you mentioned earlier that you're um, brought up with a lot of Moroccans in your neighbourhood. We don't get a lot in this country, but I read a lot about obviously the Dutch Moroccans and stuff like this, and they're very instrumental in the drug trafficking, aren't they? Obviously, it started with the hash first routes, of all, and then it turned yeah, into the cocaine yeah. routes that are being used today. Mm-hmm. And are the French Moroccans similar? They're obviously very much involved. Obviously, in their roots with the hash yeah. and the smuggling. And yeah. so did you, first that, of all, uh, first. Yeah. Sorry, Pardon? No, no, go carry on. on. You carry on, my friend. Okay. okay. First of all, first of all, shout out to the North African community, the Tunisian, the Algerians, the Moroccans. You know, we are good people. Uh, we are good people. We are educated people. It's, I talk about us in France. I'm uh, because I'm French. We are good people, educated people, you know. We have intellectuals. We have businessmen. We have successful people. Uh, however. Uh, the, we are uh, very discriminated here in France, and I have to say it. I used to not say I, I don't talk, I don't talk about I don't use the word racism, you know, because racism is for the poor people, you know, it's only for poor people. So for rich people, there is no racism. But I can talk about discriminations in some ways because you know what they park us in some hoods, in some neighborhoods, in the suburbs altogether, you know. Like me, I've grown up in like if I tell you the literally the slum, it's the slum where I was born, you know. So uh, so we don't have people that represent us, you know, because we are Muslims also. We don't have people who represent us. We don't have judge that comes from our, judges that come from our community. Nowadays, we have lawyers, you know, and some more important people that come from our uh, uh, community because they got educated. So, yes, uh, we uh, face a lot of discrimination till now in France, uh, us North Africans. But it's uh, and um, how they uh, how this it's very important. Uh, what I would like to uh, share with you, Chris, uh, I need to uh, to take it out of my chest. And uh, but they use Islam because you know critic to criticize uh, we can we have the right to criticize 
religions because of free speech, but when you cannot uh, uh, criticize a, a community because it's called racism, so it's not legal, right? So as I often say, the Islam is uh, the criticism of, is of Islam in France is the uh, tree that hide the forest. You know, I don't know if you can say that in France, but the tree that hide the forest to criticize and to be discriminated the North African. Anyway, yes, so I've grown up in this uh, area, you know, in west of Paris, so Moroccan uh, area. Uh, uh, and the, our dreams, because all the big traffickers of hash, the importers, you know, they do ex import export, they come from my area, the top, top ones, the first one who brought the, who brought the hash in France, right? So our dream when we, when we were young is to become hashish trafficking, you know, and it was our dream, you know. But we started to sell like, you know, uh, uh, 20 uh, an ounce, ounce, uh, half a kilo, you know, 250 grams, different type of qualities, you know. So we started like that. And yes, uh, Moroccans, Algerians and Tunisians and the North African, we're not going to say only Moroccans because Moroccans are the plugs in Morocco. But you have the uh, the community, uh, the Algerians, the Moroccans, you know, who get involved in it, and they are very good at it. And they import it uh, some by uh, tens of kilos, other by hundreds of kilos, and others more important by tons, thousands of kilos. You know, so we grown up in that neighborhood, and we see those guys with the Mercedes, the you know, the the convertible, the Porsche, the Ferraris, and it, you know, it makes us dream. You know, a sparkle in the eyes, and we want to be like them. So that was the, that's that's the story how it be it started. So me, I would really started in a young age to sell hash and weed, and then find weed. I was to bring it from Holland back in the days, you know, because it didn't have weed there in in France, Paris, and uh, and then I jumped into uh, cocaine, and I was the first one to bring cocaine in my neighborhood. I was the first one to sell it in my neighborhood, and I have a story. I was in jail, and um, I was in jail. The the, the my last sentence and. Uh, uh, the, the guards come and to pick me up and to take me to court for whatever, you know, to meet the judge, the investigating, the, uh, investig uh, the prosecutor, you say in English, you know, to meet him, uh, but it's a judge in France. And uh, juge d'instruction, we call it, you know. <laughs> and uh, I meet one of my uh, childhood friends. They bring him to prison, you know, because we we are in the score. And he says, hey, daddy, hey, hey, you fucker. You remember, you all, you all, you put us all in this shit. <laughs> oh, no. And I say, yeah, he said, hey, fucker, you put us all in this shit. I say, hey, I can see your big nose. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then I have so many stories. I make them all smoke also. All smoke, but I'm not proud. Also, uh, Brother Chris, I'm not here to promote the use or uh, the business of uh, drugs because drugs are bad, bro. You know, especially uh, cocaine, heroin, those are drugs, those chemical drugs, you know, because it destroys, uh, it destroys you as a human being. It destroys the society. It breaks family. So I'm not here to, 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 to promote it. However, the one that he wants to get in this business, you know, I will not judge him. You know, do it, but do it well. You know, so this is it. Um, I understand uh, what I've done. I understand, uh, uh, but this is how it is for me. It's just a business like others, but I don't promote it. And uh, people, they have the, they take their own choice. But if they get into it, you know, they have to do it well to secure themselves, to be uh, very focused, and to have discipline because it's all about discipline. So what else, brother? <laughs> and so. Obviously, how did it advance then into smuggling then? Obviously, you said you brought the first person to bring cocaine. Was it from Holland initially? You just went and brought a little uh, bit there uh, and brought it back? Or? No, no, no. The first, the first time I bought cocaine, I bought it in there in Paris to a friend of mine that I know. You know, he used to bring it from, uh, from Italy back in the days, you know, in the 90s. He used to bring it from, in, from Italy. So I was just selling tickets, you know. And, uh, and the first time I started to do like uh, from the kilo, I used to travel to the Caribbean, you know, I used to live in the, in the Caribbean also. So uh, so I don't even want to say this island, it's a French island. And I used to go there with hashish, you know, with hash, you know, those plates plates of hash, you know. Yeah. I used to put one or two kilos here. And back in the days, you could, in the in, uh, late 90s, early uh, 2000s, very early 2000s, you can still take the plane and you don't get checked with all these uh, scanners and shit. So I used to put one or two kilo like this, you know, on me, 
take the plane and go to uh, to uh, to the Caribbean and exchange it, exchange the hash. And back in the days, it was you exchange one kilo of very good quality hash for four kilos of coke because it was really cheap back in the days, you know. And and the hash was very expensive from Morocco to the other side of the world. And those Rasta people, those black people from the uh, from the Caribbean, they used to love it and sell it very expensive because there it's only weed. And uh, I and and then when I come back with two kilos, I put it here and I come back also like that. This is how I started, you know. And then I did the uh, I did the uh, ovals, you know, oh, those things no. that you swallow. Oh, no. <laughs> Listen, brother, real story. Oh, crazy shit, man! I have so many stories with that. I've done it so many times. Okay, and uh, I even swallow myself, but I could swallow 800, uh, 800 grams maximum. You know, and just thinking about the taste of it because it's plastic, and everything that you put in your into your uh, into your body is get rejected. You know, so ah, but you need to drink some uh, some uh, orange juice or some fruit juice to pass it. You know, and I had one guy with me that I used to make him travel. Also, he used to take up to two kilos in his stomach. You know, <laughs> but it's very gross because you shit it after. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> you well. shit it after. Yeah, you shit it after, you have to wash it, you know, and sometimes the cook smells shit because he didn't go to that very well. <laughs> oh, man, it's gross, man. You know, you see the ways to make some money, brother, you know? So, yes, 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 we've, we've done it all. We've... <laughs> Crazy. Did, didn't you get, did you get imprisoned in the Caribbean at one point? Yes, I got in prison also in the Caribbean, also in the early 2000s, you know, for some, uh, I don't even want to talk about this, but it was some violence shit, you know, but I didn't stay that long. I stayed a couple of months. I met a very, very good friends there, you know. So, yes, I did a little bit of time there. Uh, it's very dangerous, very dangerous, you know, even though it's uh, under the French law and it's the French system there. You know, there, those guys, they don't joke. It's all gangs, you know. They all have shanks in their pocket. They all gang. Uh, if you are not with, if they, you, no one knows you and you are not with this, uh, with those people, they will try to fuck you up, to take your money, to take your commissary, uh, you know. So, but it went well, well with me. I made some really, really good friends. And I met those friends, you know, those guys from South America, Central America, actually, who I was doing after the narco torpedo operations. You know, so I don't say the right places in North, I say Central America, but it's somewhere in America, you know, in uh, South and Central America, because, you know, never one, uh, no one found them. They never been arrested, you know, so voila, quoi. I never want to talk about those people. Well, I wish them luck so, as well. Hopefully they never get caught. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's it's done now. It's done because it's it's got it's been it's been sentenced. So I had my sentence. A couple of yeah. people also with me got sentenced. So that's it, really. And so when you got into doing the torpedoes, obviously you were taking big loads. Or I heard your your first load was forty kilograms, wasn't it? I will explain you exactly. I explain to you how it happens. You know, my guys, they tell me, okay, listen, Daniel, I was in London back in the days, you know, they come to visit me, we party in London, they see me partying and doing only shit. And uh, and uh, they, my friend, he told me, but what are you doing here, man? Yeah, come, come to America, come to South America, come and stay with us a little bit. You know, don't stay by yourself. Well, what money are you making? What money are you making? Stay with us. I stay with them, we take the boat, we go uh, fishing because I love fishing, diving, you know, uh, around the Caribbean Sea. We stopped in those French islands. And then he tells me, uh, you know, I have some uh, I have some loads here. I have some kilos of, uh, I have some uh, good quantity of coke. Um, it's very difficult for me to bring it uh, to Europe. You know, give me a hand, please. Think about something we can do. And I say, okay, I make some research. I say, listen, brother, you know, those, those guys, you know, those Peruvian, I don't know. Those Peruvian, I know, they send uh, the narco torpedoes from uh, uh, Peru to uh, the east coast of America. You know, why we don't do it the same? He said, okay, you have to uh, take some money, green light, and try to build something, you know, to make it happen. So I start with a torpedo first. I build a little one, very little one, like not even well, not even one meter long, you know, to see how it works. You know, I'm made of steel, uh, of steel you know, uh, iron, steel. But the inox, you know, this iron that don't uh, 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 oxi uh, oxidate, you know. Uh, I built one like this. Uh, I put 40 kilos in it. You know, I didn't even do it. Did, uh, I, first of all, I trained diving, 
going nighttime on their container boat here in Europe and there into the Caribbean, you know, uh, 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 you know, to know the, my environment, how it happened, to know the port, to know the environment at the port, to know where to attach and how to attach this torpedo under the, the container boat. You know, it's like uh, something quite, uh, it's not, I would say, difficult, but it's a lot of training, you know, a lot of training, a lot of resources, you know, a lot of money to invest. Then I find out how to do it because, you know, on a container boat, there's different ways. There's people, they, they hide it in some places under the hatch. They hide it in some places. But me, I wanted to leave it as a torpedo and and build some cables, special cables, you know, for lifting the heavy loads, like tons you can lift. You know, I attach it to the torpedo and then I attach it to the bars because you have the lateral 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 propellers, you know, and there is bars that protect the propellers. So I attach them like this and I leave the torpedo getting, you know, taken by the boat. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So, but it wasn't the, the right way, you know, because after you always make it better and better, you know, after the first time you find out that it's not good. And the torpedo of, uh, of uh, six foot two, you know, it's a torpedo. It's six foot two. Uh, it's a four, uh, forty-five uh, to fifty centimeter diameter. You know, like it's quite big, come like this also. And you stuff it with hundred kilos, hundred and ten kilos of uh, of coke in it. So yes, uh, the first time it got lost at sea because I attached it with uh, chains, and it wasn't strong chains. And when I dived to pick up the the the, the, the torpedo, I found only the chains broken. To tell you how strong it is, you know, it's very dangerous and strong underneath of the of a container boat. So I found it all fucked up, and the chains one ar was around the propeller wow. of the big container boat. To tell you how fucked up it was, you know, and I put it, you know, I was with my mask, everything nighttime, and I and I, I take the chains like this from the propeller, the small one. The propeller is that size, you know, the lateral propeller for that big boat. Oh shit, man! You know, I come up. We are all fucked. We are all pissed off. And then I say, okay, uh, we're gonna do uh, something else. We're gonna do uh, a bag, uh, like a, a, a fishnet. You know. So I built the special fishnet with very thick plastic uh, lines. You know. I built one. It looks like a cage, but it's made of plastic. You know, uh, fishnet. It looks like a cage to uh, to fish the the uh, how do you say the Omar Omar Omar. You know that um, that uh, that uh, it's not a shrimp with the big uh, lobster, with the big claws, lobster. lobster. Yes, uh, Omar en français, Omar en français, yeah, lobster. It's like a cage to uh, to uh, fish the lobster. Yeah. It looks like that, but it's made of plastic. You know, with a little opening I built, and I can stuff in it uh, fifty kilos. You know, the first one I built fifty kilos. So it started like this, you know, and I uh, could take it under the water. I put some weight in it. And with um, with uh, like uh, you know a balloon, you know balloon for the boats that you put on the yeah. side, you can pump it, you know like this. I pump it with my bottle, you know. I plug it with my bottle, and then it can goes down in the water or up. You understand what I mean? It stay neutral on the water. It doesn't uh, it doesn't sink and it do doesn't go up. So it's like you when you when you go diving, you have your your jacket also special jacket. You know you pump it, you can go down and you can go up. You know. Yeah. And I put plums, plumb also, you know, the plump. Uh, how do you say plomb, uh, les plombs in English? Uh, you know these things, the, that belt, heavy, heavy, they, these yeah. weights. Be, weights yeah, 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 of course. Belt, but, diving belts. Yeah, yeah diving belts, yeah. Diving belts, you know. I put it also in the bag. You know? so, and then I attach it. It's nighttime. It's a commercial port, so it's very secure. It's like strategic places, you know commercial port but you know the in the caribbean uh you know the ports are open to the ocean you know on the atlantic side so they is open to the ocean you know so it's very easy to get to it but in europe for example in france it's closed you know there's uh gates all over cameras so you need to find a good spot where you can die, die from you know and you need to have a plan to extract that uh that torpedo so then I did. I start to do the bags. I start to do the bags. But my first bag I did the first uh, basket. You know that first basket I did. You know that uh, that little cage. You know, uh, unfortunately, it got taken by the cops. You know, this is what the time the cops find out that I was doing this shit. 
you know, because I had the cops already on my back. How I got the cops on my back, I had a meeting with a guy, you know, and I had to give him a mission, you know, to uh, I have to give him a mission to do something for me. And himself, he was already watched by the cops for something else. You know, and the day we were in Paris, because I went in Paris just to meet him, you know, the day I was in Paris, I see uh, the cops in motorbikes, two guys, and they are just next to me, you know, and they look at me, you know, because they didn't know me, you know, and they were following my guy. And I look at the cops, I said, those one are the cops. I, and I said to my friend, you brought me the cops, you brought me the cops, you know, so I dropped my friend and I tried to, uh, to, 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 to escape somewhere, but uh, they, they traced me everywhere. So they find out that I was doing torpedo. Uh, from Spain to France to uh, whatever, wherever. And then they start to be on my back. And uh, But they didn't have any wiretaps. They had only the wiretaps with no one, only with my uh, other friend, the diver. They only had my conversation with him. And also I wanted to, uh, to uh, how do you say, hire. I wanted to hire another couple of uh, 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 divers. And you know how I hire divers? It's very easy. They, you know, I go to internet. I check this big company. There's a big um, uh, global company, you know. It's a French company, and they do underwater work. And in those websites, you find the, the CVs of all the oldest from that company that you used to work. And I contact them one by one, <laughs> you know. And I say, okay, you know, uh, I would like to hire you to build a ponton, you know, to build something underwater in the Caribbean. Would be interesting. The pay would be this and that. So they have the uh, wire... Why are the the why are taps uh, tapes of uh, when I was oh, when I was fuck. hiding, yeah, when I was hiding and talking with my other mates, you know. So this is what I had they had on tapes. Otherwise, back in the days, you know, we used to use those PGP phones, which is not secure anymore. You know, it's fucked up. But the of PGP course. phones that I had, it it was my own servers because I met them. Uh, the my uh, you know my guy, you know, he told me, okay, take the money and find us a way to communicate all together. So I made. A PGP, I, I hired an especially engineer, you know, who, who did everything, you know, and we had our own server. No one could get to our um, uh, encrypted key. So that's why they didn't hear us. They didn't have anything about us, nothing. So, uh, so but, you know, they, uh, they had a few stuff, you know, but, uh, but uh, voila, I got arrested for that thing. They come and, they come and uh, I was at home. I was at home. Uh, I was in my apartment in Paris. And that night, you know, when Quickly. I got arrested, that night, yeah, sorry. Uh, how long um, run did you have, though? Like, how long were you smuggling uh, before? Obviously, you don't want to say too much. I don't want to get you in any trouble. But how long a period and how many loads of search? And did you make brother, good money? Did you have success from it? Obviously, uh, you must have made a, you, for, every, for every load that got through, you must have made six figures, 100 grand up, surely. And I explain you. In this business, you know, only the big boss makes money. You know, you need to be very smart. I don't deal. I'm a logistic guy, so I get paid for the uh, the what I do. Stick the stick the the thing under the boat. Uh, to, uh, uh, extract it for here in Europe. You know, you know. Uh, build a team around me. Yes, I do. My, I did money, but yes, also I spent money. You know. Okay. Of course, so there's no money anymore. There's no uh, money anymore. Thing I was saying, you know, in this game, brother, in this game, smuggling drugs and all this illegal shit, you know, personally, that's my rule. I will not do nothing with people I don't know. Of course. You know? yeah, I will do nothing with people I don't know because uh, I could have done maybe lots of money. Maybe I would have done well, but uh, I have this problem of uh, not a need, we are kind of trust, you know. I like to work with people that, you know, they are like, you know, close, close to me. And I know I've done things for them in the past. They've done things for me. We are like a bro brother in arms, you know. This, so this, this, is, is what this, I... this is very important, especially when you're in such a dodgy trade where if things yeah. go wrong, people are losing millions of pounds worth of loads or you're getting 20, 30 years in jail. You've got to trust the yeah. people because inevitably, like what happened with you, the first load, and I'm sure many other loads, Things do go yeah. wrong. So you need to be yeah, working with people that you trust. And more importantly, they trust you as well. When um, something nah, yeah, goes You wrong. can lose your life. Huh? You can lose your life, brother. They can kill you. So I was with dangerous people, brother. I'm telling you, you know, they could have killed me many times. And I was crazy back in the days. I wasn't conscious, conscious you know. I was really crazy, man. You know what? I was uh, I was another human being, to be honest. And when I when I arrived that fr in France, bon, I will take about this when I got arrested, because it's quite funny also. <laughs> so, 
Go, go on, brother. What were we saying? So, so we were talking about how much money you'd make. So in terms of how would the deal work, were you a partner in it or my friend? Like, for example, my friend no. used to do it from France to England and he used to get paid 2,000 a kilo. And so the, whatever he got, 50 kilos make 100,000. Was it obviously no. you're, bring, you're bringing it from the Caribbean, so you should have got paid more than that. What was the deal? How did it work? No, the deal is very simple. I'm mean, uh, just in charge of I don't ask no questions. I don't want to know nothing, you know. My, uh, my job is, was just to check the, the loads, you know, the, 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 the products, you know, go to the jungle there, you know, in the mountain to go and check it. The stamp, the quality. I used to bring my little machine, you know. Um, it's a hot plate. You know this uh, blow, the movie blow? Yeah. You know, with uh, with that uh, fantastic uh, actor, what's his name, uh, Johnny Depp. Yeah, it's an unbelievable uh, film. Yeah, yeah unbel- uh, great movie, you know, great, great film. And uh, you see, there's that uh, junkie who tr- who tests test the cocaine. It's yeah. called the, um, uh, it's called, how would you say it, the, the burning point. It's of called course. the burning point. Because cocaine starts to melt at a, at a, at around 150, 140 degrees Celsius. Let's yep. talk in Celsius. You know, start to and from from 140 degrees Celsius when it starts to melt, then you find out if it starts to melt from 140 Celsius, it means that it's a lower quality. You know, but if it starts to melt at 180, 190 degrees Celsius, then it's top, 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 top quality. Okay, so that's why he was saying, "Oh, 100 and oh, I was crazy about it." So I had this little, uh, this little hot plate, you know, to test it, to test the, uh, to test the, to check the, 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 the stamps, to check the route, because you know, when you are, for example, in South America, you know, you uh, cannot take it uh, straight away. This, uh, you cannot take it, take it straight away to, uh, to uh, 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 Europe, especially when you are on the Pacific coast. Okay, so you have to take it by boat or by land, I would say, to uh, Equator. For example, Guayaquil, there is a big port there in Equator in Guayaquil. And then from Guayaquil, take the boat to uh, pass the uh, Panama Channel and take it to the Caribbean where it was the, our base. Okay, because it's French, uh, French, uh, French uh, uh, islands. Okay, and from there, you know, uh, uh, put, uh, make sure that uh, to bring it in, uh, in Europe. So me, I was paid as a, you know, I had a fee, you know, I asked me, I don't want to say how much, how this, how that, but it was a fee, you know. I didn't even say to myself, yeah, pay me that much, you know. People told me, okay, we pay, we give you this and then do the job for us, you know, which was very generous, I would say. So uh, so in terms of money, I'm not the guy who's going to make take the money from selling the, the gear because I don't have the network to sell it. You know, this is not my stuff. And even though uh, it's not my stuff and I didn't want to get involved in it, right? So, but I could have said, I don't want to get paid. Uh, pay me in uh, in gear. I could have said that. Maybe I've done it, you know? So I could have said that also. But, but I didn't choose that uh, that way of getting paid. I just want to do my job as a logistician, you know? Uh, make sure that everything is right. Uh, transport it, put uh, satellite tracker in the gear like this, I can track it wherever it is, you know. It's very important, you know. Even the transport from uh, one place to another place, you need to put a tracker in case someone comes to steal you, you know, there's people around ready to move, you know. So it's a very, very, uh, it's a very, very, it's a job. It's not easy money because a lot of people, you know, that they don't know shit about it, they say, yeah, but is this easy money? It's easy money. No, it is not easy money. It's a job. It's a work. There's demands, you know, offers and demands. You know, there's a logistics. There's money involved, big money. And when you lose, you lose big. You know, you lose big in your life. You lose big in money. You can lose your life. You can lose your life, uh, your real life. You can uh, go to prison. You can lose all your money. You know, you can have troubles. It's only troubles. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but I, tra- I traveled a lot. I had a great experience. I met a lot of different people, you know. I learned. And I always say, you know, I can make it. Uh, I, can, I can smoke a little, anything from A to uh, from uh, one part of the world to the other part. However, you cannot cross a canal like Panama Canal. You know, you cannot cross it with a torpedo in it because it's very narrow. There's cameras underneath. It's only one way straight, ocean, uh, and you have to cross the ocean or the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea or whatever, you know. 
So yes, uh, money wise was good money. I was having fun, you know. I uh, gave also, you know, so it was good. Don't want to talk too much about this because you know I have a big fine and I have no mo no money in some ways. You know, I'm just living. You know, sometimes I work, sometimes I don't work. Uh, I'm patient. I wait. I don't know what I'm waiting for, <laughs> but I'm waiting. <laughs> you know? So so voila. I try to uh, we'll talk about this after later uh, the podcast if it works well. Uh, but, uh, I'm a one man army for the time for uh, at the moment. So we'll see. Yeah, but fucking hell. So you actually got really deep. Like, like I said to you, my friend, he was just bringing it from A to B, but you're actually in the jungle in South America. Oh, ah, yeah. I'm going to tell you why, Chris, because, you know, those people, they need people that they trust. And uh, I don't send flowers to myself or say I'm a trustable guy, you know, because uh, I used to say uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm, a, I'm a thief and a liar. <laughs> you know because all our life you we used to rob and we used to be thieves you know and liars and it's true you know but when i was in prison i faced my own reality you know i didn't like myself the way i was you know so you take conscious about yourself you cannot change the human nature but you can uh arrange it and make it a bit better so yes of course the you know the trustable people and me i'm a trustable guy and wherever around the world i get arrested you know i'm gonna keep my mouth shut you know even if they give me 30 years you know so this is the rule this is how it is you know it's a job people accept it uh some other guys you know in this game because a lot of snitches in this game they get arrested but they cannot make it they can play the tough guys maybe they kill people they did some shit in their life but still they cannot get 20 years they cannot do even 10 years you know, they cannot do it. So they're going to snitch on you. They're going to rat and they're going to fuck up your life and they fuck up your family's life. So no, personally, uh, you know, I have my, uh, I have honor. I always said that, you know, I have honor. You know, I would never look at, could, would be able to look at my uh, myself in the mirror. You know, so yes, they trust me. They know where I come from. You know, what type of guy I am. You know, so they send me everywhere to do the checking, you know, to install the uh, the satellite trackers to check the quality, to check the stamps, to organize everything from A to B to Z. So voila. So you must have got in some dangerous situations at certain points when you were with... Um, uh, certain situa uh, dangerous situation is when I have argue argument with dangerous guys, you know? And me, I'm completely, you know, I'm not conscious and I'm completely fucked up in my head that I don't give a shit that is dangerous and then he, he can kill me. You know, yes. but that's my dangerous situation. Otherwise, another dangerous. No, man. You know, this is the job. You get. You are prepared. You are very careful. Uh, you are when you drive a car. You are very careful that they don't follow you. You check always your car also in case they didn't put a tracker underneath or somewhere in the car. We all ha we always have this. Uh, this you know this machine to uh, track the trackers to find yeah, them. The you wand, know, this, uh, the wand. Yeah, they call it in this country wand, yeah. magic wand. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the magic wand. Exactly. I always have this, you know. Uh, no, it's okay. But except the when I got arrested, I wasn't checking my car. The last week, you know, before they arrest me, I wasn't checking my car. And uh, they put a tracker in it. Normally, I always track it. I always check it. But I was crazy at this moment. We had many loss, you know. And I was worried also because, you know, when you have one loss, you know, your friend can be your enemy, you know, because he's not maybe by himself. He has other partners, maybe, and they're going to say, okay, Danny, let's kill him, this bastard. Yep. You know? They can say that. Of course, uh, lots of people good, get uh, killed over losses, you know? Lots of people. Everyone starts uh, adding each other. People suspect this one, that one, yeah. and every big people yeah. can get killed. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. But uh, <laughs> regarding, you know, trusting me in terms of keeping my mouth, my mouth shut, uh, this is no problem, brother. You know, my mouth is shut. I have some fun. I say, send me to prison. I'm going to cook. You know, I'm going to make my gym. You know, and that's it. What was the biggest load you lost? Uh, 40 kilos. But also, I lost also 120, 119 exactly. And that's you when know? you ended, that's what you got caught for in the end, was it? Uh, yeah, the last one. But you know what? The last one, you know, it wasn't, uh, it was in another way. I don't even want to talk about this. It wasn't under, under, under the water. It was another way. But uh, I understood that the cops, they were on it already. You know, they were on it. So I looked from far, and I, the cops, they were everywhere. I said, no one, I said, no one is going to go and get that load, you know, because we're going to get arrested straight away. So we left it. Yeah, of course. And you already got caught so. up in the first case you got caught in, the, the smuggling case. Um, this was, yeah, so, this is what we call a conspiracy in England. So they didn't actually yeah. catch any cocaine, did they? 
So they didn't catch anything that they, uh, they, they related to me. So what they caught, they caught, um, they uh, stopped the boat, you know, because they find out, you know, that I was uh, talking with, uh, it was a problem with the boat, okay? And I was on the wire. They were listening to me. And I made the uh, mistakes in some ways, you know. I should have be patient because sometimes stay patient. Don't do nothing. Don't overreact, you know. Or, or just be patient and wait. And I had a problem with the boat. I couldn't track the boat anymore that they wanted to, to that the, the gear was underneath, you know. I didn't... <clears throat> And I called the boat company because on the website, you know, you have a special website. It's called Vessel Tracker. You can track all the boats from the world. You know, you pay for it. Yeah. You pay a fee, whatever, for the year, $800 or something like this. I forgot. And then it was written something, whatever. I forgot the name, what it was written. And I didn't understand. So I called the the, 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 the shipping company and I said, yeah, but uh, on the website is written this and that. Uh, can you explain me? And the cops heard that. So they knew what boat it is. So I had to go to... Uh, to Spain to extract the torpedo. It was a big mission also in Spain, and uh, and we I couldn't go under the under the boat. It was some uh, issues that I couldn't go under the boat. So the boat, the, its next stop, you know, was Spain. Uh, was uh, Marseille, south of France. So I go straight. I take the flight. Bam, straight to Marseille. I arrive in Marseille. You know, the port is huge. I find a good spot where I'm gonna dive. I wait till the boat arrive. I know the time it's arriving. It arrived. It goes under its uh, place. And then I dive and I go underneath and there's nothing underneath. Nothing. And I'm completely berserk. I'm completely crazy. What the f And the first thing I was thinking of, I said, the cops took it. And my mate, he said, no, it's not possible. It's the cop. Maybe it ripped off. I said, it's impossible it ripped off. The, the, the way you attach it and the, uh, the elements you use to attach it is imp at least there's something left, you know? Some uh, cords of some things of some uh, attach, you know, and so at least. So I knew it was the cops, man. And from that time, I say, yeah, the cops, they are on me. So I go back home in Paris. You know, I go back home in Paris that night. That night, I was sick. You know, I had like a uh, stomach pain. I go to the hospital uh, around uh, five o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. Get out of the hospital, you know, feeling better. And instead of going back to my place, I go to my mom's place. She was near near the hospital. And uh, I arrived around uh, 6 30, uh, 6 o'clock, and I 6 30, I, I, I'm, on, I'm on my underwear, you know, on my bed. And I hear, bam, the door, bam, bam, big noise like this. And my mom, you know, she wakes up and she comes straight to my uh, door and she tells me, what is this? And I say, it's the cops. <laughs> <laughs> and I say it's the cops, and I get, I, I completely panicked, you know, and I look, the first thing in my head, you know, it was two things. Where is my laptop and where is my passport? I need to get rid of them, you know? So I got rid of my uh, laptop through the window. They never found it. And my passport, I couldn't find my passport, you know? And then I look at by the balcony because we live in a uh, uh, very, uh, in the 10th floor. And, and I look at uh, by my balcony, how can I jump to the neighbor and try to escape, you know, impossible. So then I said to my mom, yeah, open. no, first of all, I arrive at the door. I say, I say, I say, they say, open the door, motherfucker. I say, you can, I say, you cannot open the, open the door because it's like a security door, like really like big security door. And he said, yeah, we're going to open it. I say, I have two grenades. If you come in, we're all going to blow up. <laughs> and then they shut, they shut up those bitches. You know, they shut up. It was so funny. And, uh, and then I said to my mom, open the door. And they open the door, they have the guns, the lights, you know, the guns on my head. I'm on the floor, naked almost. They put the they put me on handcuffs. And then my mother, she passed like this. They they see my mom's house and they think she has a nice house. And they say, Wow, the house. Wow, very nice. <laughs> they were saying like this, those fucking cops. You know? Yeah. They were saying, Wow, it's big, wow, nice, you know, all clear, all clean, all nice. And then my mother, she passed just in front of me and she does me like this. <laughs> Hey, hey, just the cops wasn't a stress, you know, it was a relief in some ways, you know, because I saw them everywhere. I knew that they were getting me, you know, and uh, it was a relief. But uh, my mom, she gave me big stress when she did me like this. And I was thinking about stuff that I left at home. I said, oh, I hope so. I hope she's going to get rid of it. But they didn't find anything. They find my passport, a little bit of money, you know, some stuff. And then they they took me to the to the police uh, the. the the, their office at the Ministry of Internal Affairs. They have a special office for the DEA. 
And then voila, and then uh, voila, blah, blah, blah. I stayed four days there, you know, at the police station, four days. And then they sent me to prison. And four months later, they come to arrest me. But another, uh, not a group of cops from the DEA, they come to arrest me again. Fuck, man. And when I was, yeah, it was that time when I met that friend, you know, I met that friend. I told him he was coming to prison and me, I was going to the, to, to see the judge. And he was telling me, hey, Danny, you, are, you put us, you always put us on. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it was funny, man. And um, and uh, the guy, uh, the guy, uh, bon, I speak with the officer, you know, the CID, you said that in English. You know why I say I know CID? Because I've been in prison in London, in England also in London. Yeah. So, so uh, the CID, he uh, talks to me and he proposed me a deal, you know, he proposed me a deal. He told me, okay, Danny, I know that you know them all. Okay. Work, he said, first collaborate with us. But I said, no, I'm, I cannot, I'm not a snitch. I'm not collaborating. No, work with us. We give you a bit of money. You know, we, you can work. You are protected. We know we help you. And if you like someone from your group, we can protect him too. He told me like this. I said, no, fuck it, man. Send me back to jail. I'm saying nothing. They sent me to see the judge, you know, the prosecutor, as you say, uh, juge d'instruction. I didn't even talk. You know, I was, I was tired, man. I was tired, you know, after four days in the police station. And then they sent me back to jail, and that's it, you know. And I did, uh, and I start to be uh, to sit in jail, uh, you know, doing my push-ups and my pull-ups, uh, cooking, you know, being on social media, uh, uh, answering, uh, uh, getting into interviews with media, being invited in on podcasts all over yeah. the world. Yeah, that <laughs> no, was incredible. Having fun. Yeah, so you having you, def fun, you, you know? definitely made the best of it, and so you. Uh... Yeah. Did you end up taking it to trial or did you just plead guilty and say no, no, guilty? I, uh, I never played guilty, nothing. You know, we are quite, uh, you know, us North Africans, we are very stubborn people, you know. We don't ever say, even though they had proof against me, I said, it's not me. But at the end, I said, okay, it's me. At the end, you know, during the court, it was very funny the, because the court, um, my, uh, my uh, you know, the my um, trial was a one-month trial. Okay, it's a long, it's a long so I just came at the beginning just to talk one, one time. And then uh, when they used to come and pick me up from myself, I refused to go to the court. You know why? Because I knew that they would give me la cuenta. They would give me the bill. I knew it. Yeah. So yeah. I said, fuck it. Well, I'm going to go and wake up in the morning and meet, meet that judge. But we had fun. I make them laugh. You know, it was really fun, you know. And the judge, she said something about, do you regret? And I said, judge, I regret nothing. And if I have to do it again, I will do it better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't give a shit. You know, I knew that I will eat. You know, I knew that I will eat like uh, like some uh, some years. Of course. So, no, it was funny, man. Yeah, it was so funny. Then I I appealed against the decision. You know, I you know why? And we didn't say anything because there's no point. Because you know, in France, even though they don't have like much proof against you, the suspicion has uh, has a value of proof. Only suspicions. Plus the cops, they hated me and they hated us. So they did every, everything, even illegal stuff, to fuck us up, brother. This is France, man, you know. This is France. This is how it is, you know. And no one snitch, no one talks. It get them mad, you know. They didn't know this, nothing. This they didn't have same talk. in England. Same in England. I just had exactly the same myself. It was only by miracle. Yeah. And I was innocent that yeah. I got off. And I never get caught with anything or doing anything. It's crazy. Yeah, man. Sometimes it's like this. But, you know, I don't know, man. And the lawyers, you know, lawyers, solicitors, when you're fucked, uh, uh, there is no point to take a solicitor sometimes, you know, there's no point. Take a, you know, the one that they give you for free. I know, take a I free know. solicitor, yeah, it's even I, better. 100%. 100%. You know how many lawyers I had? Yeah. yeah I, I had maybe three three lawyers in total. I suck one, they take another one, I suck another one, you know, I spend money, you know, I say, what the fuck with these lawyers, you know, what the fuck did they, they do? Then I went to appeal, you know, against that sentence because... I had that, uh, ah, yeah, I told you, so the cops, they arrest me a second time. Yeah. They tell me, okay, we find 100 kilos of coke in a boat, you know, and on this boat, uh, we stopped the boat, we found your DNA on the a tracker. But the DNA wasn't on the tracker, it was on the cable of the tracker, because those trackers, the satellite trackers, I plugged them to a big lithium battery. Like this, they stay for years, you know, I can yeah. always call the tracker to see live where it is, you know. So, and they found a the trace of my DNA on the cable. You know, fuck this shit. And they say, it's you, it's you, help us, help us. I say, I help no one, you know. Uh, uh, they, first of all, we cannot, I'm, I am very, I will, I'm not a snitch. Second, we cannot trust you, you know. Uh, and uh, no, send me back to, uh, send me back to my cell. 
So I had, uh, because they didn't have anything, you know, it was just, they found the tracker and I said to them, I, I was, you know, back in, that, in the days in 2013, I was already in the Caribbean and I was doing this narco torpedo shit. Okay. So, and I met some people and I sold them the trackers and the cables and the, the batteries, you know, but I got uh, for five years for that. And then for the torpedo, I got seven years. So it was a total of 12 years, right? But uh, it uh, uh, legally, because it's my first offense in uh, drugs, you know, uh, legally, legally, uh, it's, it's a conquer. So it goes to 10 years, okay? But normally when you conquer sentences, the biggest, it's the smallest. However, I couldn't have access to it because you have to go to a trial again, like an appeal. So I went to the trial to get from, uh, from the 10 years to seven years. And they refused. So I went to appeal. And then appeal, brother, you know what? I talked like a lawyer, man. You know what? I wrote like 10 pages. And I have a very, I'm a very well spoken in French, bro. And I write very well in French. You know, and I wrote like 10 pages. And I talked like a lawyer, blah, 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 blah. And they dropped me to eight years. And I did seven years. So I did the max. It's, it's a lot of time. But thank God, obviously, in England, it would have been 30 years. So yeah, I know. It could, I know. It could have been worse. And so like you said, yeah. you mentioned that. You made the best of your time in there, though. Ended up becoming a celebrity behind jail bars, or at least a jail yeah. celebrity. And so talk to me about, obviously, everyone cooks in this country in their kettles. You have to find ways of cooking. Like, I read the Vice article again. Look, the food's shit, so you have to cook yeah. yourself. And so, yeah. obviously, you were doing this, like everyone. But when did you decide to go onto social media and put your videos uh, up? And hello, very simple, uh, you know, very simple. Uh, 2015, you know, January 2015, I'm in prison. You know, uh, I'm settled already. I have my uh, hot plates too. I have bought my food from commissary. You know, I'm there. I got my phone. And one of my friends, uh, one, one guy, you know, very nice guy. I didn't know it very much, you know, back in the days, you know, this guy. And we used to do some business, nothing illegal or drugs or something, other business, you know, and we become French, Moroccan guy uh, from Holland, okay? So that's why big, big, big shout out to the Moroccans from Holland, the best people, brother. Those I've Moroccans heard, from Holland. Very, very serious. Shout out to Ridwan Taji. Hopefully he gets yeah. some justice. He just got the full <laughs> life. So shout out to all them, man. Um, yeah. I pray for them. It's been a fit yeah. up. They didn't get caught doing anything. They put illegal chats onto them. So, but yeah. yeah. So, so those Moroccans, answer. yeah, those Maro sorry, brother, uh, those Moroccans from uh, the, from uh, from uh, from Holland, they are very, really, really nice people, man. You know, they have those values. They are friendly. They are like brothers, you know. So this guy, he contacted me. He said, "Danny, oh, one of your friends came from France to see me for whatever, you know. Uh, uh, I asked about you. He told me you're in prison, man. He gave me your number, blah blah blah. No, I called him." I call him, oh man, I couldn't even reach you. So what's going on? You, I'm here, I'm your brother now. You can ask me whatever. Whatever. You know, and he helped me for through my through my <clears throat> sorry, through my seven years he was with me, this guy, you know. Seven years, you know. Big and I knew him only too. yeah. He's big, big, big top brothers. And I have other top brothers also, Moroccans and even Dutch white people who supported me, like uh, uh, my friend Red, uh, my other friend Yari. Uh, my friend uh, uh, Mokro, Mokro Fis, you know, uh, Hakim, even girls, brother, you know, even Cause, girls. Because sometimes know, like Shiraz, the, pe the people you do a lot of stuff for, the people that should be helping you put in money in, you call them and they don't answer, they don't do anything. Yeah, but I didn't even know them, those ones. No, the last ones I didn't even know, I met them online, you know, I met them because they were following me. But I'm going to yeah. get to that point, bro. So, yes, uh, my friend, he contacted me, say, yeah, Danny, okay, let's make an Instagram page and call it 187 Gangsters. Okay. Make wow, was that, was, that, was that you and your friends? I was following that years ago. That's incredible. Yeah, That's the best man. videos. Yeah. yeah, we went up to almost half a million followers, bro. Wow, you know? that was incredible. So, yeah, yeah. I was sending him all my videos, and it started like this, you know, back in 2015, you know, sending videos of uh, me uh, uh, building a, uh, a place to hide uh, my phone or cooking, you know, and uh, so we started with one, two, three hundred thousand followers, and then it went big. We went on different podcasts, uh, Vice also on 187 Gangsters, uh, some uh, some radio shows in Canada, everything. 
And then, and then uh, you know, I said, oh, no, uh, brother, I'm going to do my own, uh, my own shit, you know, my own uh, page. And because I like this guy, you know, the chef called Gordon Ramsay, he used to have this Hell's Kitchen show. You remember Hell's Kitchen of in England? He's big, he's yeah, big I used celebrity to, here, as you yeah, know. Yeah, I stopped. Yeah, yeah, I know him. I know him very well. I used to yeah. I watch his shows, you know. I used to love it too much, man. And I used to love his personality, you know, big boss. He's the boss of his kitchen. And his type of guy, you know, he, tell you, he tells you off, you know, because he's the boss, you know. So I put it Danny, because I'm Danny Hell's Kitchen, but with a Z. Danny Hell's Kitchen, because it's hell, you know, prison is somewhere, it's a hell, you know. And then I start to make some videos, cooking videos. <clears throat> then after, you know, uh, media try to con- start to contact me, Vice, uh, uh, many medias, podcasts in the United States, uh, England, everywhere, Holland, everywhere. And I start to, you know, uh, voila. Well, I don't have that much followers, I would say. I could have, I could have been a, a follower hungry. But you know, I'm this type of guy. I fuck it, man. It comes, it comes. It doesn't come, it doesn't. I didn't put, I didn't put um, lots of uh, effort in it. I was just showing the videos, and that's it. You know. But now, it was, you incredi- know, I find it, was, it, it was incredible what you did behind bars. I think it's brilliant, and to have people yeah. like the vice <laughs> doing all this and building this stuff, and to have the contact mm-hmm. with the outside world, and to do more than most people do when they're free. I think it's incredible mm-hmm. what you did. Yeah, but it was cool because, you know, food, as you know, brother, you know, you have a, bon, uh, we are, it's, it, we, the conditions, I would say, of uh, French prisons are good. Even though people complain, blah, 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 it's true, it's dirty, it's true. But look at the food we have, man. Look at the commissary we get, man. You know, it's quite good, bro. You know, we have our own uh, clothes, our own trainers. You know, it's true, it's small, it's true, it's dirty, but you make the best of it, you eat very well, you do your gym every day, you go to the library, you get people who brings you, uh, your family or your friends bring you, uh, when they come to visit you, brings you books, you have phones all day long, the the, the, the the guards, you know, the screws, they don't give you headaches sometimes, you know, because those screws, they are these cool ones, you know, also, these bastards, but these cool ones also, so voila, quoi. I start to make my things. I, I used to say, um, because, you know, uh, uh, the day of uh, visits, at the beginning, I didn't have visits because, you know, parents are old, you know, uh, my family is all over the place, you know, so to come here in Paris and come to visit me, it wasn't easy. So at the beginning, but the first, the first year, I didn't have no visit, bro, you know, so I was washing my own clothes in a bucket with the soap they sell you, you know, that powder soap, you know, I was washing and then, and then I said, fuck it, man, I need someone, I need a girl to come and see me. So I put my uh, the best photo of me uh, on a dating website called Plenty of Fish. <laughs> P-O-F. You know, I still remember. And then, uh, like, uh, one day later, a beautiful girl, she contacted me. Beautiful, brother. If I tell you, like, long hair, like, long hair, big fake boobs, uh, uh, injected the lips. <laughs> big, big, beautiful girl. You know, anyway... So she told me, okay, well, bon, anyway, we, do, we, we talk, and uh, she had some issues. Uh, don't, I'm not, not going to go through it. And I helped her from my uh, cell to uh, sort out her issues. And uh, after three weeks, we know each other, she came to visit me. And then she came to visit me for two and a half years. You know, she Beautiful. did everything for me, brother. She did everything, everything. She brought me everything I asked her to bring me. You know, I helped her also by my side. You know, I helped her. I pushed her. To, uh, to settle in her life, to work, to save her money, to go and look for her family, blah, 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 blah. I want her to be straight with herself, you know, straight in her life. But she was giving me too much headache. She was giving me loads of headache. And then I told her, fuck off, you know, after two and a half years, you know. And I wish her the best, you know, because she was very, very generous, very good, very kind. She gave me, she gave me love while no one gave me in some ways, you know, like a woman love. Yeah, it helped you helped you through that hard time. Obviously, just yeah. seven years seven years is a long time to do behind yeah. the door. And like you said, I can tell you're a happy, fun guy, so you make the best of the situation. But seven years is still a very, very long time to spend away. It's true, but it goes fast, bro. Yeah, it goes really fast. And then, and then, you know, I uh, I smuggled the meat because it's very easy to smuggle shit in France. You know, you pass through the metal detector. If you don't buzz, you can put meat or whatever here. You know, even those phones without the, the metal plate in it. You take it off, you know this thing. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, it's a special day, the, 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 the visit day, because you need to take a day where you know it's that special, that guard that you have good relationship with him that he's not going to strip search you, you know, like naked, you know, and let's say, 
Uh, you know, but, you, but in France, you know, we have, for example, the hash, the drugs, and we we stick it between our ass, our cheek bum, not no. in the ass, but between the cheek bum. You know, I, and, and and unfortunately, I know, unfortunately, I know this stuff They're from England. So. <laughs> and you walk like this, you know, oh, your cheeks no, like very, very tight, <laughs> like a duck. Uh, and you see that because before you arrive to the street search room, there is a room, you know, all together like a waiting room, and you see all those guys by the walls <laughs> putting oh. things, <laughs> putting things, you know, between their cheeks, but you know, so. So we do that, and uh, sometimes, you know, I just put it here, you know, like the meat. I see people come with uh, one kilo of coke, uh, two kilos of hash, you know, normal. Of course. And phones, everything, man. Everything, everything. Meat. But I was always bringing meat, spices, you know, food. Even strawberries I brought sometimes, one kilo of strawberry. Uh, (laughs) Because I fancy to make a strawberry cake. And uh, voila, so I start to make uh, my videos. Lots of media contacted me, even though I didn't have that much followers, like 15,000, 10,000, you know, they started contacting me because they found also the energy. They found also, uh, voila, I was talking, uh, I was talking, uh, I was saying good stuff, you know, I wasn't like uh, talking like a rude boy or like a guy from a, a scum back from the streets, you know. So, voila, quoi. And, uh, and uh, I liked it very much, man. I liked it very much. I did my first podcast with uh, the Racist Sandwich guys from New York. You know, they have a big podcast, food podcast, uh, Racist Sandwich. Really interesting. And I remember when I was doing the, I was sitting on my uh, little desk, you know, in my cell, and then I hear, ba 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 ba, my door, like this, ba 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 ba, open that uh, Leuton, how do you say that thing? The, the, spike, uh, the little hole to look through the. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. Open the door, uh, because it was at the end, you know, when they closed the door. Ah, I was yeah. scared. I just dropped the, the earphones, and then I say, ah, oh, ça va, chef, ça va, chef, oui, ça va. But, you know, they used some, some guys, they used to know, oh, I've seen your videos, you know, and they used to be cool with me, man. So even sometimes I sleep with my uh, phone uh, next to me, you know, and then the guards come and wake me up at seven o'clock. Danny, 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 hide your phone, hide your phone. Yeah. They're coming. I know. Yeah, no, it's, so, it's, it's good and bad in everyone, like you say. Yeah, yeah. And the day is more the focus because, you know, I've been uh, a lot. I've been punished, you know, because uh, during my time in um, in those prisons where you are waiting on remand, because you when you wait on remand or you have a small sentence, you wait on the special prisons called Maison d'arrêt. Then when you have a big sentence, they send you to central or centre de détention for big sentences. You know, it's more or less, uh, it's in the uh, away from uh, the big uh, city centers, you know. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so I was waiting there on remand for three and a half years almost, you know, three years before I got a sentence. And I said three and a half years. I had enough, man. I was aggressive, but not aggressive towards the guards, you know, because they, it was a really motherfucker. And once... That guy treated me like a piece of shit. So I was so angry, man. I was so angry. I grabbed him from his neck like this. And he started to do, ah, ah. <laughs> and then I spat in his mouth. <laughs> it was very good. Spat in his mouth. And I said, now you kiss me, motherfucker. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. But when you're in this, when they treat you like an animal, eventually you can yeah. act like an you animal. And... Yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. And then, and then he wanted to pre- It was on the newspaper. He wanted to press charges against me. And then all my friends from inside and outside, they went to see him. They said, "No, you know, you pushed him. You know, he's a nice guy. You know, don't press charges." And one day, after I came back from the hall, after thirty days of hall, okay, he comes to my cell and he apologizes. You know, and I apologize too. <laughs> <laughs> I say, oh, sorry. I say, yeah, me too. Sorry, I should have not reacted like this, you motherfucker. Yeah. But then they learn. You know why? Because the guards in France, most of them, you know, you have the people from France, the white people, for example, or people from uh, North Africa, but there's no much guards originally from uh, the same background as me, but they are most white people that come from the uh, countryside, okay? You have massive motherfuckers, you know? And uh, in uh, the big cities, you have the, they bring the people that comes from the islands, the French islands, you know, those colonies, you know, yeah. Caraib, uh, Martinique, uh, in the uh, Pacific Ocean, uh, Mayotte, uh, uh, Nouvelle Caledonie. And they come, they don't speak proper French, they speak patois, you know, the patois, like the Jamaican speaks English, you know? So, yeah. yeah, so they speak patois and there is a problem of communication between us and them because they think that they can act like they act in their island, you know, with aggressivity and stuff. But they're in France, brother, you know, and they deal with the people in front that their neighborhood is just next to the prison. 
you know, and they have all the cousins, the brothers, the friends, you know, that they come, they're going to wait for them outside and fuck them up, you know? So it happens many times some guys are fucked up badly, you know? Yeah. Even in England, it's happened everywhere like this, you know? Of course, yeah. So, so voila, so I did my time there, doing my uh, podcast, Vice, you know, a uh, lot of medias, French medias, everything, man. I even been on a podcast uh, with that uh, really nice uh, girl called Lucy. I invite her to my podcast also, Lucy Vincent. Very nice guy. And you should, you should, you should, nothing. But maybe you might invite her on your podcast, bro, because she runs that charity called Food Behind Bars. Have you heard about it? Yeah, brilliant. That is, helps people. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah I'd, she, uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to interview her. Yeah, yeah, I can hook you up with her, no problem, you know, uh, to enhance the quality of food in the British uh, prisons. Oh, She's mate. very, 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 very smart woman, you know. She's a very kind, very smart woman and funny also. So she invited me also on her podcast. Then I invited her on my podcast. She's from London, a very cool girl. Yeah, incredible. And uh, many other stuff. So voila. And then I, I accumulated in total of 200 days of haul. Like only I was doing only 30 days, 30 days, 30 days, man. And when I was in the hole, man, you know, you know that you lose, oh, you have beard like this, you get skinny, you know, but I was doing everyday planks, uh, doing meditation, you know, and planks every day and reading, you know, and the hole, the hole is a small, you know, it's a small uh, room and it's a cage inside the cell with the cage thing and then the cell door. You know, there's a sass between the, there's a yeah. space between the door, the cell door and the, the, the cage, you know. So with the fucking uh, metal toilet, you know, the fucking metal be bench, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing. But they give us a radio, a tiny radio like this. You know, they give us a tiny radio, the food, the same rubbish food, you know, that they bring you in at uh, midday. And then no, and uh, and uh, and and uh, where I was there, uh, the the hole was in the, on the roof of the prison. You know, and it's a dark place, bro. Dark place. You hear, you hear people crying nighttime, man. You know, crying, really. You no, know? so crying. Or the other one, he didn't. Have, he doesn't have his uh, his weed, so he get completely bare. It's like, <laughs> and you laugh. And then there is those um, those uh, uh, aeration, those holes. You know, to uh, yeah. to for the entry, air entry, and you pick the other guys from it. Oh and no, it's, it's like, terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. It's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> and you no. speak with the people, you know, hey, wait, 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 yeah. what's up? like this. You speak with someone because you see so no one. You see no yeah. one. And I must admit, yeah, I, I got put in there for seven days, and I was going crazy. <laughs> I was going crazy because yeah. I couldn't smoke. But they didn't give me a radio or TV or even a book, and so I was going mad. But um, to do two hundred but... days of that, it has a big effect. It's either going to make you go crazy, or like oh. you said, you managed to get through it with fitness. But honestly, brother, you know, I'm a spiritual guy and mystical guy, you know, so I have some initiation, initiation, I would say. And for me, you know, it was kind of a relief. OK, because as you know, as you know, uh, the, the prison crowd is not like the best uh, intellectual uh, crowd you can meet in your life. Huh? There's a lot of stupid people. And most of them, they, they're in prison for some really bad shit and rubbish shit. So, so I would say it was a kind of a seclusion for me. Like I get away of all this crowd and find be with myself and also connect it with myself uh, uh, with the divine presence. I would say, you know, with God, you know, to connect myself with God, to connect with myself. All right, and uh, it was quite good because I read lots of books, man, lots of books. Read a lot of books. Uh, it was good because, you know, the food they give you is it's, it's in some ways healthy because it's steamed food. You know, there's no salt in it. You know, so I was uh, getting slimmer. Uh, I was uh, doing my uh, little workout every day, uh, reading, you know, and thinking a lot. But it's very boring. You know, the, the, the cell is dirty. Uh, you have no, you see no one. You're always by yourself. Uh, I, the, the day you know I spat on the mouth of that of that uh, of that guard, I was I did uh, I did thirty days just before, and then I stayed the, like a couple of days, like forty eight hours outside. You know, got back to myself, and they sent me and again for thirty days. So I did almost uh, you know almost two months, you know, <clears throat> almost two months in one in one shot. You know, so yes, it was like. Uh, 
No, it makes you stronger, man. It makes you stronger, stronger mind. You can stay on your own, you know. So you, uh, voila, it was my, uh, it was my destiny in some ways. But and then I'm gonna come to that, to that uh, point after, you know, uh, the, our conversation when it was my last thirty days to do because I had some thirty days suspended sentence, you know, in uh, in July 2018. I was, I will always remember. And it was uh, the he, the most you know uh, uh, the weather was really really big, uh, big yeah. yeah remember 2018 crazy man crazy and uh, we were all uh, you know with our uh, box 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 uh, boxer short in the yard you know all with underwear you know all sitting all uh, getting some tan you know in the yard uh, putting water uh, pouring water on us you know playing football yeah. <clears throat> and. Uh, and uh, that day, uh, that day, uh, I know that I had to do 30 days in August, and I was scared, bro. I was really scared to do this, uh, to do these 30 days because he's on the roof, a, a plexiglass, uh, no, no, plexiglass window. Uh, mm. the, the the sun, you know, it's very hot in the cell, and I was yeah. really scared that day, you know, man. I'm telling you. So I uh, call all my friends, you know, from my other. Say, okay, guys, I'm leaving. You know, I say, what do you mean you're leaving? You know, I kiss them all. Like this, I'm off. And then I start to climb, you know, on those pipes, you know, that's where the waters come from in the roof, you know. I climb on the pipe and I go up to the, on the roof of the jail. You know, yeah. I jump the, the razor wires, you know. I have cuts all over my body, blood all over my body. Uh, you know, I had I had a piece of hash in my pocket, you know. I stick it between my cheekbone <laughs> like this. <laughs> <laughs> like they don't find it, you know. If, when I get when I will get caught, and then because it, it was the only way for me to avoid the whole those thirty days and to get transferred to another prison because it's yeah. it's taken as an attempted uh, uh, escape. So then I enter into a negotiation with the warden, blah 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 blah, blah and then uh, they make me uh, go down. And uh, when I go down, uh, when I go down, you know, normally they, they they put you the handcuffs and they put you down like this. You know, they put you down like this and they make you walk, you know, heads down. And I said to the warden, yes, I come down. But the uh, one condition is that I don't, you don't put my head down. I keep my head up. Okay. He said, okay, you have this, but you go, uh, come down. And then, and then I said, and I don't want to go to the hole. He said, the hole, you will go. <laughs> and then I go down. They put me down and they forced me to go down, and uh, and uh, and I was down. They, I I keep my head up, you know. And I said to everyone because everyone was the was by the window taking videos. And I said, "Hey guys, I don't I don't do the helicopter because we call it helicopter when they put you they make you walk like this with the head down. Yeah. We call it the helicopter." I said, "I didn't do the helicopter. I didn't do the helicopter." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they take me up there and I stayed only uh, uh, eight days. I stayed eight days in the hall and it was the hell, bro. The hell, the hell. It was like an oven into the cell, man. Oven. I couldn't even breathe. I didn't even feel good. I was in bed all the time. I uh, I blocked the toilet. I blocked the sink and I flood the entire uh, 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 yeah. block. You know, I flood the entire block to make, you know, but it was the heat, the steam coming out of the floor, bro. Yeah. I couldn't even breathe. I, even my blanket, I put it with water and I was covering myself with a, with a wet, wet blanket. You know, it was uh, crazy. And after, after the seven days, they wake me up at seven o'clock in the morning to bring me whatever, to check, you know, and I, I, I stand up, you know, and I fell unconscious. I see everything red around me and I fell unconscious. And then I, when I, I they put me back to my uh, to my uh, bench, you know, to my bed, and uh, they bring uh, the the doctors from outside from the hospital. The ambulance comes, you know, and the guy there is two doctors, <laughs> and I, I I'm unconscious now, you know, everything is getting better. I'm conscious, and they they use that thing, you know, to hear your heart like this, and I, and I said, take me to the hospital, take me to the hospital, uh, you know, relax in the hospital. You eat, oh. you see people, you know, you're in the hospital. You know, outside, take me to the hospital. And then the guy said, no, no, you good, you good. No, no, no. We... And his colleague, he, say, say, he, he was telling him, yes, let's him take him to the hospital. I said, take me to the hospital, motherfucker. <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> he didn't take me. And the following day, they opened the door and said, okay, transfer. We transfer you to another prison. And I was happy, man. I was so happy. I had, And before I climbed on the, uh, the roof, I prepared all my stuff for myself. Everything was in the front door, 
packed, ready to go because I knew that I will go. You know, so 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 then they sent me to um to a dispatch prison. You know, on the suburb of Paris, very far mm-hmm. dispatch. You know, called UAT. You know, it's the dispatch center, and it was the, the that week where uh, uh, this guy uh, called uh, what's his name? Uh, let's see. Uh, Ah, I don't know. Um, Redwan Farid, you know, yeah, yeah. shout out to Redwan Farid. Maybe he listened to us, or I hope he listened to us. Uh, you know, uh, shout out to him. You know, he escaped from that prison with the helicopter. They came to bring it to get him to the to the visiting room. His mates, you know, so he escaped with the helicopter. It was that. Uh, it was really really tense. You know, I stayed four days at the at the dispatch prison, and then they sent me to another prison for long uh, sentences. You know, for over five years. And they sent me to East of France uh, near Luxembourg border. And I arrived there. I found the same day, you know, the same day I find a phone. I buy a phone. I get my food, everything. I was already set up, you know, already set up. And I remember I brought with me this little cable that I plug to the, my iPhone. And I plug it to the TV like this. I can watch the movies from my iPhone on the TV. Yeah. So, so... <clears throat> So uh, I went there, I stayed uh, 14 or 15 months, you know, and I had enough of this place, you know, because it was really far from my family to come and visit me. So I had the rarely visits, you know, but it was good in terms of uh, of uh, comfort. It was very comfortable. I had my own cell. I had a big cell, like for three people on my own. And when I arrived there, you know, I got, uh, you have like induction, you know, but I had a special induction from the head of security. And he told me, oh, you have a very... Uh, very bad, uh, you know, dossier, very bad file. I uh, uh, hope you're not going to make some troubles because if you make some troubles, we're going to make you, blah, blah, blah. He tried to play the the tough guy. I said, listen, uh, boss, you know, chef, we call chef. Listen, chef, you know, you don't give me headaches. I will not give you headaches. And I give you my word of honor. And I checked his hand and they never came to visit me, to uh, to give me a headache, to search, to do nothing. Because as you know, Chris... When you uh, you were well behave with the guards because they're human being and you give them the respect you know and you speak well uh, you well spoken with them you know they give you the respect back and they say okay Danny we know the, he's a cool guy he doesn't make any trouble we don't make him troubles this is how it is you know in prison of course so and the last uh, the last uh, before before they transfer me but after they transfer me to another prison you know and before that I had enough of this place man I had really really enough I don't know why man it was too far from Paris. And uh, and uh, I took, uh, it was this guy I was hanging with. It was, it was a big Albanian gang there. They were like 20 of them, man, the Albanians, all together. Very nice guys. Oh, very, very, very nice guys, those Albanians that I met in prison. And they had an argument with another guy that I liked, a black guy from uh, Suriname, South America. You know, very nice guy also. I like him because we were working out together all the time. You know, he was serious, calm. You know, I like calm people. <laughs> and he, he, was, he was in trouble with them and they wanted to kill him. You know, so one day he found himself alone in the yard with uh, uh, 10 Albanians uh, with knives and they wanted to fuck him up and he started to run all over the yard. Then they, they beat him like it was like they wanted to kill him. And then a guy take a knife to to stab him. I take the guy. I push him. I push him. I put my body to uh, to protect that black guy, you know, the Suriname guy on him and I say leave him guy leave him guy I stand up I put him behind me you know uh, on the corner and I say I push the guys I say you're gonna get 30 years and then they calm down you know and they were pushing me like this like to no, don't I stop protecting him I say listen brother and then people they say yeah why are you protecting him I said because if I find myself in this situation and it can happen to not uh, to uh, any of us you know I would like someone like me to come and help me and give me a hand you know and it's true brother you know Sometimes, you know, you have to be fair because also in prison when I was in Paris also, it was this guy from Marseille, you know, from Marseille. And this guy, he's a crazy guy. He's, they are Marseille, they stab, they are, have no pity. They're, they kill they're, the real, they're the real French uh, gangsters, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, are, they are killers, man. They know how to play with those, uh, those knives. You know, they're Mediterranean. They have a hot blood. <laughs> and it was this guy, you know, um, it was an argument between two... Uh, to a neighborhood in the prison. And then they call this guy, yeah, take this uh, ceramic knife and, pl- and uh, stab this guy. So they have an argument with those other ga- those, uh, this other gang. And then this uh, Marseille guy, he comes, he takes the knife to st- and I hold his hand. I say, what the fuck are you t- doing, brother? You know, do you know those motherfuckers? Okay, those young, they are young kids. You know, you know those motherfuckers? No. And then he came after that, you know, he came one day later. He kissed me, you know, on my cheek and he hugged me like this. He told me, thank you, Danny. You know, I would have messed up my life. 
Yeah, no, and I say yes, brother. And then the other guy, yeah, why are you doing this? Then you say, fuck off, man. Uh, if you want to stab him, stab yourself. You know? No, it's true, yeah, but, uh, because me, I'm I'm OG. You know, I'm from the uh, the neighborhood where I'm a prisoner. That's good. Uh, you know, that's from that neighborhood. Going. Everybody knows me. That's good. That's Everybody what... knows me. That's good. Fair play to you for saving people. I've yeah, saved people it's... in there, so it's good. Yeah, not... it's in true. prison, life is cheap, as you know. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And then, uh, and then uh, after I saved the life of that black guy, you know, in uh, in that place there, in uh, near the Luxembourg, I saved his life. And then it was the ward, and she was waiting outside, you know, seeing all this mess. And I see the ward, and I want to fuck off from this. I say, okay, uh, we give you the authorization. She made me a letter that I saved the life of blah blah blah. But they sent me to a shit hole. <laughs> First, they send me back to the dispatch. I stay to uh, the same dispatch. I stay two weeks there, and I see the guys that they are waiting to get dispatched. You know, they can wait like six months, one year before you get dispatched. You know, I was very lucky. I stayed four days, and then I stayed two weeks. I was very lucky too. You know, I was working with uh, that black guy, also a very nice guy. He got 15 years because he uh, broke a glass bottle on the head of a cop. You know, and he uh, stabbed him in the eye. He didn't do it on purpose. Why he did that? Because uh, this cop was beating up his daughter. You know, you're a dad, you see your daughter get beat up. It's normal that you're going to act. And this guy was on a wheelchair. To tell you crazy stories. <laughs> yeah, and he was making uh, vodka in his cell. <laughs> you know? Me, I didn't drink. But you know, when he said, yes, hey, let's have a party. On his wheelchair, you know, sitting down in the yard and drinking vodka. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff's hoping... dangerous I won't drink the vodka yeah. stuff they do I drink the hooch they make out of the orange juice though I used to love that oh, yeah. so, but the strong yeah, stuff yeah. I had people go blind off it so I don't want anything to yeah, do no, with it's it true. it's true but in uh, France you know we, uh, people they receive the vodka over the wall huh? over oh, the wall that's fine then. over the wall yeah. Belvedere vodka only good quality you know like, oh, uh, I would have uh, been drinking all of it yeah so, no, no, I just tried it with him that time, you know, we drank a little bit of vodka in the yard. It was funny, you know, smoking joints and talking with a guy on wheelchair that got 15 years because he went to protect his own daughter. You see? Because yeah, he's a black guy, you know. Uh, if he was maybe, a, you know, a normal guy, maybe he would be have less. I, I was also with another guy. He knew that the cop was fucking his girlfriend, his wife, okay? He went to the police station. He entered in the uh, in the uh, in the office of that cop. He had a, a knife. You know the carton to cut to cut cartons. You know it's called yeah, cutter. Yeah, yeah, of cutters. yeah, yeah. Yeah, cutters, yeah, cutters. And he slashed his throat and he died. He got twenty five years for that. Fuck's yeah. sake. Yeah, twenty or twenty five or thirty. I forgot. You know. <clears throat> so they sent me, and then they sent me to north of France, next to the Belgian border. To a, to a prison for uh, uh, sexual predators. Fuck <laughs> sake. And, uh, and they put me to the block, to the C block, where they all there. Fuck. <laughs> and I stayed in that block. I stayed uh, six, six, six or seven months. And then they sent me to the normal block. And I was happy after six or seven. But I turned mad. And I met some crazy people, man. Some crazy stories, brother. Some crazy stories. And I was very aggressive. You know, the, towards everyone there. Like you know, I and said, I always... it, 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 turned, it turns you into an animal. This environment turns you into an animal, and you're so angry and upset anyway. It uh, doesn't take much. Uh, and then when you keep people in cages and punish them, and you don't give them any freedom, and you treat them horribly, and the food's disgusting, you 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 you, yeah. you adapt to your environment. You become a creature of the of the environment, don't you? Yeah, it's true. And uh, you know, this is what I was saying to. Um... To SP from Delinquent Nation, you know that podcast, very nice of guy. Course. Shout out to yeah. SP, yeah. and uh, and also I would like to say shout out to the Sekaki brothers, you know Walid and Ashraf, you know they banged up in Morocco, you know for years and years. So big shout out, they are friends, and for my uh, brother, go fast. So yes, I'm getting back to that story. Uh, what I was saying about? <laughs> well, you're talking about uh, obviously the. There must have been a certain uh, point. You know, you, you know, at this point now, obviously, you've done so much bad stuff. You met so many people. You got put in so many bad blocks, 200 days in the punishment, six months on a wing with sexual people. Was there a certain point in your sentence, whether it was like three years or four years in, and you said, I'm finished with crime? Or was it when you came out? Or what, what point was it during it? Or was it? <clears throat> well, first of all, brother, you know, um, as I told you earlier, you cannot change human nature, you know, but you can make it better. 
But and uh, as I, I I used to say, I used to say that, but it's only uh, not even a couple of months that I changed my mind. Uh, I used to say I don't regret nothing. You know, I don't regret nothing because there is nothing to regret about. And uh, you know, I was thinking that regrets, you know, it's a it's a feeling that uh, uh, pulls you down. You yes, know? It's, it's true. You know? That pulls you. And uh, and after that, you know, I meditated about the fact that I say I don't regret. But actually, you know, because I'm a believer, you know, I believe in God, and regret is the first step of forgiveness. Yeah. You know, and it's a uh, and it's being humble, humble, and fighting your own ego to say uh, to uh, to be to be a humble and fighting your own ego to say I regret. So now I can say I regret, but I'm not gonna give the reason why and this. You know, I keep it for myself. It's inside my heart. You know, but however. I never thought about I will stop this or stop that. I stop. Uh, I will not say I stop nothing, but uh, I'm not in this type of thinking. You know, I don't think like that. You know, it happens what it happens. You know, I follow my destiny, but we make our destiny happen, right? By making choices, right? So, so and uh, now when I was in prison, I never said that I will not uh, do anything. Or, you know, I will never say that. I never thought about this. You know, I say this is what it is. You know, we are guys. You know, we are men. We stand up. Uh, we uh, well, stand up guys. We uh, we do our time, and that's it. And we make the best of it, as you said earlier. You know, we make the best of it. Nice food, sports, reading. You know, talking with some nice people. You know, meeting nice people. Don't uh, voila. Keep yourself for yourself. Help also. And uh, for example, I lost my uh, my password for my uh, for my Facebook, where I kept all the contacts with my old inmates, especially that nice guy called Sinan. He got 18 years, you know, to protect himself. He killed two guys, but to protect himself, they wanted to kill him, and they gave him since 18 years. Crazy shit, man! But remember, even it's if you man. can't, even if you can't log into the Facebook, you can click on the profile, go to the friends, and see the list of friends, and then contact the people oh, that way. I, did, I didn't know, but a couple of days ago, you know what I've done? I said, okay, let's put that uh, password, and I found it, and I'm in okay. touch with him now. He's still in prison. It's been eight years for him, you know, eight, eight oh. or nine years for him so far, and he still have three, four years to do before he can get out. Uh, you know. Uh, on provisory, or I don't know how we call it, you know. So, Indeed. so yes, you meet nice people, uh, but few nice people. For example, it was it's this guy. Shout out to my brother Nima. He's in prison now again. This idiot, <laughs> you know. I met him in prison also in east of France. And um, when I got out, uh, I wanted to rent a place, and he told me, "Don't rent any place. Come to my place. I'm um, I'm never there. You know, uh, abroad. It was abroad, but in Europe." He said, I'm never there. So just come to my place, you know. I said, okay, it's a very nice place, you know. So, and I said to him, yeah, brother Nima, why, uh, why are you doing that for me, man, you know? He told me, because, you know, when we were banged up together and I was, one day I was sick, you know. I was sick and you came, all the time I was sick and you cleaned my toilets, you cleaned my cell. You, and during that time we were together, you were making food, me food every day. And he said, well, you know what, brother? I completely forgot about this. And it's true. You know, you have to help people also. Uh, you have to, uh, even the people that don't have nothing, you know, you have to send them some food. For example, when I was in Paris, uh, the first 18 months, because you need 18 months in prison to adapt, you know, yeah. to adapt properly. I think it's 18 months, except like you did prison, uh, all the all your life you did prison. But to uh, me, it was uh, it was five years I didn't do prison before I got arrested. More than five years, five or six mm. years. And uh, and uh, I need to adapt. And I had cellmates at the beginning before they put me on my own because I, they saw that I was troubled in my head, you know. And and it, it took them eight months to uh, eighteen months to understand. And the first eighteen months I had uh, uh, cellmates all the time. Some cellmates I didn't like. I say you fuck off tomorrow, okay. And others uh, I liked. Uh, you know they kept they stayed with me. For example, uh, it was this guy from Algeria. His name is Walid. You know he's a illegal immigrant. He was in prison for some theft or some shit like that. And he's from my neighborhood, my street in Algeria, in my town in Algeria. So it, it was this bond. And when the, the, I kicked out of, uh, the previous cellmate, I said, go to that cell to the guard and bring me Walid. You know, so he went to that cell, said, Walid, do your package. And he brought it to me. And I was very happy. My, one of my best cellmates was another guy, a French Italian, we call him La Pizza. Very nice guy also, real gangster. You know, young lad, real gangster. Uh, and uh, and once the uh, and uh, la pizza is leaving, I think they, uh, he got free or something like that. 
very nice guy. Shout out to him, but he, I don't think that he listened to this podcast. He doesn't even speak English. And uh, they bring me, uh, they bring me a, 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 a 50 years old, 52 years old guy from Syria, but he's Syrian originally, but he's been in France for 25 years, married to a French uh, woman, having mixed race kids, having his own import export business, blah, 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 all his life. He has his house, he pays his fucking mortgage and all his life, you know, set up. And he was completely fucked up when he arrived, like completely drugged up. I said, what's going on? You know, he's taking the pills, you know, to forget about all this. You see the pills they give in jail. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know the names of it. You know, I don't forget Tonksen and all these shit, Ripnal, you know. Terrible, and all terrible, all terrible shit. stuff. Yeah, yeah, terrible. Yeah. It dry you up. It makes you puffed up, you know, puffed oh, up. Oh, I know, you know people that come out of jail you... fucked up off these pills. Yeah, They've been yeah, taken the I whole know. sentence. Fuck. Those idiots, they are, they're idiots because they cannot stand they are, because they get they're, you get told in there anyway. I remember I took one on my yeah. first day or something because they offer them right. to you. And then someone said to yeah. me, we don't take these pills. We don't take them. You don't take them. They fuck you up. And so you don't take them. So I, I, I took I took them too when they sent me to see the judge. I take two I to the judge. <laughs> you know, I took two like this and I was like, ah, <laughs> completely fucked up, you know. Yeah, I did that also a couple of times, you know, when I arrived. But listen, they bring me, uh, they bring me that guy, and uh, completely fucked up. I said, "Listen, brother, take the lower, uh, lower bed. I take the top bed. You know, no worries. Respect you, old man, older than me. Uh, I'm happy. You know, you're Arab. You're gonna teach me something. How to read and write in Arabic because you always want to learn some good stuff, you know. And I think I will have like some intellectual conversation with him. And he was crying every day. And they're crying like a baby, you know, like, ah, they're crying crazy. And he was from uh, this idiot. He was doing some dodgy businesses, but nothing, uh, nothing like really uh, bad or something. He was doing some do- uh, money and checks business with some guys, you know, to get some cash because he needed some cash flow for his company. And uh, and those guys, he was doing the business like uh, 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 washing their money, you know, washing their money. Uh, they were invo- they were themselves in contact with a lady that the daughter was in Syria for the jihad, like completely bare sex story. You know? So they, and in a, in a terrorist cases in France, they arrest everyone, everyone, even the one that's innocent, and then they uh, they uh, they filter. But it can take two years to filter, you know. Because the justice is very slow in France. So he stayed two years for him. And he was crying every day, crying. And I had enough. And I said, listen, man, you know, why are you crying, man? Look, you, look, you eat. You have the breakfast. I cook the lunch, the dinner. The cell is clean. No one's going to fuck with you and try to, uh, to do anything in the yard because you are with me. You know, you are protected in some way. I don't say protected. But I say no one will fuck with you, yeah. you know. So you see, you have a friend, uh, Sinan, my friend, the Kurdish guy. You are you speak with him Kurdish because he was speaking Kurdish. That guy, yeah. you speak with him Kurdish. Do you think, man, uh, uh, concentrate on your case? Uh, let your family comes and do, and stop that drug. Stop. And so I made him stop the drugs. And every day I make exercise. You know, like uh, uh, that movie. Uh, 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 that movie, uh, not Monastro Society, New Jack City. Have you seen the movie New Jack City? Of course, City? love it. Yeah, with Pookie, Pookie, the drug addict, and Ice yeah. make him uh, stop the crack. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I was yeah. like this with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drink water. Yeah, and we do exercise because I was doing a lot of fitness in myself. And he was still crying. You know, and I had enough. Uh, and I, I start to make jokes. <laughs> and one day, one day I say, listen, uh, sit down next to me. You know, sit down. I say, the first of all, I used to tell, I used to tell him, I used to tell him uh, because he stayed New Year with me in 2016, 2016, New Year, 2017, something like that. And uh, and I say, listen, go dress up with your shirt, your nice shiny shoes, and your jeans. Yeah, stay in front of the door. Sinan's gonna come and pick you up, and you're gonna go to the roof terrace to watch the the firecrackers. <laughs> and then I was telling him right to the warden, right to the warden, and tell him that you want to be to participate to a, a horse horse riding or to the oh swimming pool. God. The fuck, <laughs> And the one he was saying, what the fuck are you talking about? And one day he was crying so much. And I said, listen, there is a solution for you. Would you like to forget about everything? He said, yeah, 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 I would like to forget. I start to make him smoke hash. <laughs> he was smoking like crazy. And then he uh, said, okay. give me some hash. I said, I give you some hash. I smoke. He said, yes, I would like to forget about everything that he... 
<laughs> like like this, you know. And then and then I said, listen, you're gonna write to the warden, and you're gonna say that you want to be part of that new experience because they built a secret uh, hospital in the in the basement of the prison, and there is that uh, machine that frees you up, you know, all frozen, and oh, you wake oh, and they un- <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and they unfreeze you when you're free, and you forget about everything, like in that movie uh, with uh, oh, yeah, Sylvester yeah. Stallone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it will be, oh yeah, and he'll start to write, I would like to be part of the artificial coma. I call it the artificial coma. You know, and he write it down, and then the warden, she was a Moroccan girl, you know, that warden back in the day, nice, nice woman. You know, and she uh, calls me, you know, blah, blah, blah. What the fuck is this thing? I said, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, then I kicked I kicked him out after one month and 10 days with me because he was crying too much. And from there, I went to, uh, from there, uh, they sent me somewhere else, blah, 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 blah. Big story. So very funny. Sometimes you meet some people like that and uh, you do. it's you funny. Meet, and you can meet some genuine friendships, like you say in there, where you haven't got anything yeah. and you meet people and you see them for what they really are in a bad situation yeah. and then you can create great bonds forever. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Like a brotherhood, you know, brotherhood, yes, you know, yeah. brotherhood. Yes. But I can give you another example. I have a friend of mine, you know, he got out of jail, then in again, out again. And then he uh, he started to rub, uh, to do some armed robbery. But the cops, they weren't him. They arrested him. OK, no problem. He said, I'm in this part of France, man, fucked up. I've got te- eight years, but this boy is going for a long time. I say, brother, I told you, come to my place. Stay with me. Uh, don't do all this shit anyway. And I start to help him, uh, kind of, you know, in jail, you know, I help him for whatever he asked me to help him. And uh, he had a girlfriend, she comes and visits him, you know, but he didn't treat his girlfriend very well, you know, like he was talking back to her, insulting her parents, you know, like being, say, but brother, you know, and he said, he said me, Danny, call her, please, you know, uh, do, uh, uh, arrange, uh, 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 arrange it with me, you know, make it uh, good with me. And I say, okay, but you know, when I call the girl, because I know all this shit, you know, I know it very well, girls, man, jail, you know, I always put the speakers on and my girlfriend, she's just here next to me. You know, like this, she hears everything, you know, and I make him say, so yeah, my girlfriend. And I send him all the screenshot of my conversation with her when I do the messages. Yeah, okay? of course. This time I hook him up again. She go back to visit him. Okay, I say, listen, bro, you know her only for two months outside and the rest you are in prison. Be nice because maybe in certain point you will need an address. He can put you in, oh. treat her well, blah, 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 blah. And he started, he kept on treating her like shit. Even though the girl, she's crazy, even though anything. I said, be wise. You know, be wise. You know, you love her, you don't love her. Whatever, I don't want to know. Second time, I rearranged. She said, she told me, treat me really like shit. I don't have to go a guy in jail. I don't give a fuck. I don't know him for two months. But say, listen, he's my cousin. He loves you, blah, 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 blah. You know, I convince him. She goes again. And the third time, she sent me the message. She told me, uh, he told me, yeah, help me again. And then I help him again and talk to the guy, but she doesn't want to hear anything. I say, no, it's too bad, this guy, you know? He's he, really he, bad. I, he reminds me of some of my friends that I met in jail. And they're, exactly, it's like this. they're exactly the same. They're a nightmare. It's you a can't pattern. help them. They can't help themselves. Yeah. And so it's impossible to help someone who doesn't help themselves, you know? Good people, yeah. but make bad decisions every day, every yeah. day. Uh, so and, when, then, when, and then, you know what, uh, tell me, uh, no, let me just finish that because, and then he, I told me, oh, uh, and I told him, listen, brother, you know, the girl, she doesn't want to be with you, you know, I'm by her side in some ways, you know, you weren't smart enough to make it uh, good because you have no, no one who comes to visit you. So you are an idiot, you know, and I'm not going to defend, uh, defend an idiot and lie to her. She's right. And I said, he told me, oh, you have something with her. I'm sure. Yeah. He started to be paranoid. And then I call my girl, say, listen, do I don't do, you know, normally I don't even call my girl to tell me anything. I keep her away from my shit. No, I was very disappointed from that, this, this young uh, brother. Uh, and, I've, had, I've had friends like this myself. But, um, so you went through so much trials and tribulations. But when did you eventually get released then, Danny? But I got released in uh, in uh, July, uh, 9th of July, 2021. You know, it was released. I did all my uh, 21, so it's been two and a half years I'm out, you know. And I got released. Uh, so listen, they sent me to the 
to the to the prison, the rapist prison, the sex offenders. I got crazy. I threaten everyone. I walk with a you know razor blade in my pocket all the time. Anything happen, I get the razor blade. And I was hanging with a with an Algerian uh, Algerian illegal, you know, with all uh, slashed everywhere. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and when I say, listen, go on this guy. He takes the knife and he goes. So we were crazy. And then they send me after a while, after ten months there, they kick me out to another jail. It was my last thing. It was a shithole also. And I did uh, all my time. Uh, uh, and I came, I arrived with my own phone there. I put it there, you know. I don't know how they didn't find it. Yeah. And I arrived there and then I got freed from there. You know. Did few podcasts the there. Yeah. The so, one up one. That was the experience. Now I'm out, bro. Uh, I didn't, uh, I was very busy with family, with a lot of stuff, you know, sort out my, my shit, kind of. And uh, now uh, it's been a month, I would say, I start my, after two and a half years, huh, almost, I uh, start my own podcast called DHK Show, you know. Boy, the link, will be a description. And... link will be in the description, guys. I want to introduce him to a few guests as well. And trust me, obviously, he knows lots of people. So I'm sure he's got some fantastic guests moving forward. So um, the link for his Instagram and his Thanks. YouTube will be in the description. Yeah, and uh, and voila, and I invite different type of people, uh, lawyers, artists, uh, politics, uh, people, uh, you know, different type of uh, personality, ex-convicts, people in prison. Why don't you, know, you do so some of your cooking? Why don't you do some of the prison cooking out here and show some of the uh, dishes? And Hey ben, hey ben, you know what, brother? I'm gonna start to do it from now. I'm gonna That's start what people to do will it love. Go on to TikTok. Yeah. Do do it on live. Cook live yeah, on TikTok yeah, yeah. so you can talk to people. You I know? can do that. Okay, okay, I will do that. I will do that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it pretty soon. But I don't have time at the moment. You know. Plus, I have to do all the editing and shit. You know, yeah. live is good. You, I agree yeah, with yeah. you. But uh, I was doing editing. It was people who wanted to work with me. But after they are not serious at me, I'm quite, I'm quite tough. You know, like you work with me when you say you do something, just motherfucking do it. Okay, and sometimes they don't even answer to you, like the the guy. I know, he I works know. from TV. You know, they, you know, he, he works from TV uh, in uh, Paris. You know, he came also with his TV team to uh, to invite them on a TV show. Okay, like uh, well known on the fourth channel. But uh, you know, nice guy, nice guy. But uh, I called him. I said, listen, brother, we have to put the podcast on, on Sunday. Did you do the reels? Did you do the the editing? He wasn't doing anything and not even answering to me. I said, I'm no, not going to play the stuff, guys, and start to, uh, to to insult him. I was very, very quiet. I said, listen, brother, I know I'm going to, you have all my videos. I'm going to come to your, uh, wherever you are. I'm going to find you, and I'm going to get the motherfucking videos. Huh? So then yeah, they sent me everything. You just have to learn to do it yourself. That's what I have to do. You have to learn to do the edit. It's yeah. not too tough once you get to it. But it's all like the growth, yeah. mate, isn't it, of learning new stuff. But I will say to you, well done for staying out of trouble for two and a half years. So hopefully Thank you, bro. you stay on the right path, stay out of trouble. You've done enough prison time, and I'm sure yeah. you're going to do great things going forward because it's clear that you're a very clever guy, and wow. I'm sure whatever you get into, you'll do well with. And so, you, like I said, you've got fantastic energy, and I know people will love you, like I said. So, um, yeah, I wish great. you the best also, Chris. I wish you the best. Well, I, I, I can happen. tell this is, this is going to be a start of a long friendship, I can tell, straight yeah, away. Definitely. So, um, but you're in London, isn't it? Yeah, well, just okay, outside, yeah, like, we... just outside London. I'm in a place called Guildford, but it's about half an hour outside yeah. central London. So yeah, no um, problem, no problem. Uh, we, I'm, we I'm going to have to, yeah, I'm going to have to come to France and see you at some point if you don't come to England. Anytime. And um, anytime, bro, anytime you're welcome, mate. You're welcome. But, no um, and so, like I said, guys, Instagram and YouTube. Any anything else you want me to put in the description for the link? Well, uh, no, nothing special, you know, uh, nothing. Thank you, should, you very you much for your invitation. Book, you, should, you should write a book as well. You've got an incredible story. Well, I wrote, uh, I wrote, I wrote it. I need money, brother. If any people wants to invest on uh, on some merch and make some money with me, uh, they are yeah. welcome. Or developing course. the podcast, they are very welcome. Or even if there is people from a production company, they want to produce a documentary. I wrote already the Narco Torpedo documentary. Yeah. Okay, well, so we can document, make it a documentary. Netflix. Yeah, yeah, the incredible. Yeah, well, I'm looking to start doing all this sort of stuff, so we have to talk yeah, about that. But, 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 but uh, reality fiction, and I play is it, uh, in it, and I explain all the process of how yeah. you bring the the thing in the narco torpedo or in a narco torpedo operation. You know, Brilliant. so it can Brilliant. be very interesting. Very interesting if we can make a make a little series, four or five episodes. You know, short ones. 
Uh, it will be fun. You know, I play in it. I explain everything. I take them to all those places. They would never see that in their life, you know. Yeah, hey, incredible. Voilà. Incredible. Hey, voilà. uh, uh, <clears throat> well, like I said, the incredible story. And um, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, it's just no, been no a pleasure problem, chatting man. to you. I don't know, everyone will love it. And sorry, so it's ended up going so late. It's obviously 12 o'clock over your time, isn't it? So, no, no problem, man. No problem because I'm sleeping late. You know, I'm working uh, in the afternoon tomorrow. So I work, uh, I sleep a little bit late. So no, 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 I had nothing else to do. And I told you, I promised you I'm going to be there. We've been talking for a while. And uh, there's lots of people also since uh, uh, James and since uh, the Mikey from the, shout out to them, by the way. Yeah, the Blue Tip uh, from the Blue Tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They contacted me. They want to invite me on the podcast. You know, I'm very excited. Also, nice people. And also this guy, also a uh, uh, porno star. A guy nice. porno star. He invited invite me on this podcast. So I'm pretty sure we're going to have some uh, laugh. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So, well, um, yeah, like I said, indeed. I forgot his name. I'll find a few people to introduce you to as well. So people with like incredible okay, no stories problem. like yourself as well. But like I said, thank yeah. you very much for your time. You're welcome, brother. You're and welcome, we're going to speak uh, a lot anyway. So I'm going to send you my number as well in a minute. And uh, so we can... Yeah, definitely I'll send you mine too uh, on WhatsApp. But, um, perfect. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. See you later on, Dan. Yeah.